What's up guys, JP back at you once again, bringing you guys another mixed martial arts related video. This time I'm going to be bringing you my preview slash predictions for UFC 187, which is a really stacked card. It happens this Saturday night. I'm super pumped for it. Even though it was a better card a few months ago with the addition of John Jones and Khabib Nurmagomedov, it's still a pretty decent card. Of course you have Anthony Rumble Johnson taking on Daniel Cormier to crown a new light heavyweight champion. Of course we know that John Jones was originally supposed to fight Anthony Johnson and he ran into some legal troubles. He was involved in a hit and run. The UFC stripped him of his title and definitely suspended him. He's facing jail time, a huge mess involving John Jones. So in the meantime, we have the man who was supposed to fight John Jones taking on the man who last fought John Jones to crown a new uh, light heavyweight champion. Of course, the winner will probably be waiting in the wing for whenever John Jones returns and kind of unify the undisputedness of the light heavyweight championships. Uh, super excited to see what happens in this fight. I'll give you my preview and predictions later on. Of course, you have Chris Weidman taking on Vitor Belfort in the co-main event <clears throat> for the middleweight strap. And then, of course, you have a pretty stacked card from top to bottom after that. Uh, really pumped for it, so without further ado, let's get into the card. We're going to start all the way at the bottom. We're going to do the whole card this time. We're going to be talking the Fight Pass prelims, which is the first preliminary card. Uh, the first fight on the card, you have Flyweight Justin Scoggins taking on Josh Sampo. So both of these guys are on two fight losing streaks. Uh, Justin Scoggins was really young when he made his UFC debut. I think he was only 21. He was, you know, in a division where it was pretty shallow. Uh, I was looking for him to make some noise. I was on the hype train, the Justin Scoggins hype train. He comes in uh, and gets a knockout in his first fight. I thought he was going to be, you know, the, the sky's the limit for that kid. Um, and then he drops two losses in a row, uh, his latest being against John Moraga in a fight that I thought he was kind of winning, got a little sloppy, got caught with a guillotine choke. Uh, Justin Scoggins is still really young and he seems like a fighter that has all the tools and talent. He just needs to get it, um, you know, put it all together in order to be a great fighter and not make as many mistakes. And he's taking on Josh Sampo who, you know, lost two, um, his last two fights as well. Uh, this could be a loser leaves town fight. I do think if Scoggins loses, they'd maybe give him another shot. Uh, Sampo, I'd probably say they cut him. Um, Josh Sampo <clears throat> was a guy who uh, I remember seeing in his fight against Patrick Houlihan, and I think that that is how this fight is going to play out. I think Scoggins is going to make some adjustments. He's fighting a lesser tiered uh, competition in this fight. Uh, he's can win this fight. He has all the tools to win this fight. I think uh, if you remember back in Patrick Houlihan versus Josh Sampo, uh, Houlihan threw this like weird awkward uppercut, <clears throat> kind of rocks Sampo, uh, almost knocks him out, gets on top, eventually finds uh, <clears throat> rear naked choke, I believe. So uh, I could see this fight going sort of that way, but in favor of Scoggins. Uh, I think Scoggins could catch him. I think he could take him down and dominate him. Uh, you know he did get caught in a in a guillotine uh, from John Moraga. I don't see him getting caught in a Josh Sampo guillotine. I see him winning this fight uh, by submission. Uh, then we have lightweights Islam Makachev fighting Leo Kuntz or Kuntz. These two guys I'm actually really unfamiliar with. <clears throat> I knew I know Leo Kuntz has like a 17 and 1 record or something, but I don't think he's really beat all that tough of guys. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Islam is actually Khabib Nurmagomedov's boy. So based on that, he's undefeated. Uh, I believe this is his first fight in the UFC. He trains with Khabib Nurmagomedov, or, or at least is um, friends with him. I think I gotta just go with uh, Islam based on that alone, and that's kind of all I'm basing my uh, fight uh, pick on. Um, and then, of course, of course, for the last of the preliminary card on UFC Fight Pass, we have Mike Pyle, welterweights, uh, taking on Colby Convictin. Convictin. Um, <clears throat> this one, I'm not really sure about. You have Colby, who is undefeated, I believe, and he 
has fought in the UFC twice before, but he beat guys without Wikipedia pages. I think both of them were, were by submission. One of them was by punches, though. <sighs> and Mike Pyle is a really good fighter who's probably seeing, seeing his best days. I think he's 38 years old. He's getting knocked out. He got knocked out by Mac Brown. Came back and knocked out another fighter who I can't remember. And then he gets knocked out pretty devastatingly by... Uh, what the hell's his name? Uh, Means, Jordan Mean. Um, yeah, and that was pretty brutal, and I just don't think that Mike Pyle's chin is going to hold up. He's a good fighter. <clears throat> I think I'm going to go with the new breed on this one. I look him to take Pyle down, ground and pound, maybe get a submission, or he might even catch him with a, with a powerful punch early on in the fight. So I'm going to go with Colby on this one. Now moving on to the preliminary card on Fox Sports 1. We have a catchweight bout at 120 pounds, which should have been a women's strawweight bout at 115 pounds. We have Thug Rose Namajunas taking on Nina Anasarov. Uh, so this fight, I do remember Nina's last fight against Juliana Lima, and I, I felt like she was winning or it was a controversial decision, but I could be miss... Uh, referencing that fight. Of course, Rose Namajunas, uh, one of the more popular fighters in that historic Ultimate Fighter Season 20 um, season. Uh, somebody I was rooting for all the way through. Uh, she did very well on the show. She's only 3-2 and two in professional mixed martial arts competition. Uh, she has all the potential in the world. Uh, she kind of got derailed by Carla Esparza, who was just able to dom dominate her wrestling-wise. Thug Rose is kind of a tall, lanky fighter uh, who has really good, uh, you know, kicks, uh, very interesting, uh, you know, striking, uh, decent submissions, uh, but she's also very young and makes mistakes. Uh, she did have a um, loss to Tisha Torres back in Invicta. I remember seeing that fight uh, where she just didn't look like she was good enough yet. I do think she is better than she was back then. Um, but she still is having trouble putting it all together. Um, I do think that she should have this fight. This should be a showcase fight for her. But I do think that it's going to be a little bit more scrappy uh, than some of her other fights where she just goes out there and wins by you know flying armbar or something. Uh, Nina does seem like a, a tougher opponent than some people are probably giving her credit. I do remember that Juliana Lima fight uh, a little bit. Um, I think I think that Rose got this one, but I would keep an eye out that it will be a you know hard fought decision. Um, or Rose could just go in there and blow the doors off of her. But I'm leaning more towards the decision side. Then again, she could be really hungry. Uh, she seems like the type of person that really likes to prove herself, go out there, make a statement, stuff like that. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, then we have middleweights Uriah Hall taking on Hafi on the tall. Um, Uriah Hall was you know the next bet the, the second coming of Anderson Silva you know he had he was on that Chell Sun and John Jones season of the ultimate fighter and he was knocking fools heads off uh, <clears throat> he looked like a force to be reckoned with of course he drops a decision to Kelvin Gastelum in the ultimate fighter finale loses uh, that season of the ultimate fighter uh, really didn't look like the mean, aggressive, tough Uriah Hall that we had seen. Earlier in his career, he lost to Costas Philippou along with the middleweight champion Chris Weidman. So that kind of makes things interesting in the middleweight division if Uriah Hall could ever uh, be built up enough for a title shot. Um, then he goes on and I believe he fights John Howard if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he was like hugging during the fight. It was just, it was a mess. Uh, Dana White criticized him, said that kid's not a real fighter. Uh, he was potentially looking to be cut. Uriah Hall begs for another shot, says, I could show you what I really can do. And since then, he's looked great. He's looked great since then. He broke his toe in that one fight. It was really brutal. Uh, kept fighting. Looked great. Uh, Hafi on the tall is a guy who, you know, i never really been too crazy about. I think he lost to, like, Ed Herman before. Uh, Andrew Craig. He's lost to some middle-of-the-road guys. Uh, so I feel like... Uh, Uriah Hall, this should be another good win under his belt. I'm picking Uriah Hall by knockout in this one. Then we have welterweights Dunn Hung Kim, the stun gun, taking on Josh Berkman. Um, Berkman, I believe, is like 35. Uh, stun gun is around 33-ish. 
uh, he, he was on a nice tear. Uh, he had that nice knockout of John Hathaway in uh, one of the UFC. Um, can't remember which UFC that was, but you know, I think it was like a spinning back elbow or something. Great fight. Um, recently got derailed by uh, Tyrone Woodley. Um, and jo Josh Berkman looked pretty good in the World Series of Fighting. He had that great uh, submission win over John Fitch. Of course, he lost to uh, Steve Carl uh, and then made his UFC debut and lost to a uh, roided out Hector Lombard, which is really no you know, shame in that. I, but, uh, you know, it, 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 I remember that fight, and, and Berkman was, you know, definitely out. Uh, he was beat, but he didn't give up. Um, this, this is probably one of the more close fights for me. I, I feel like it's more of a pick em. I'm not really sure. Berkman's a little crafty. I feel like he he could win, but I just I'm kind of leaning towards stun gun on this one. Uh, I'm gonna go with stun gun. Don Hun Kim uh, is gonna win this fight, uh, and I'll say it's by decision. Uh, then finally we have the featured fight on the preliminary card, and that is flyweight John Dodson taking on Zach Makovsky. Uh, Dotson, I've been a fan of since his season of Ultimate Fighter. I thought he was a great fighter. Uh, I thought he was going to do big things. He moved down to the flyweight division. He has a knockout win over t champion of the, of the bantamweight division, TJ Dillashaw. Dillashaw. Uh, he challenged for the title in a fight. You know, it actually pissed me off. I uh, had it DVR'd, and the first three rounds I was watching, and then it cut off on the, the last two rounds, so I never did get to see who won that fight. I mean, I know who won it, but I, I never saw how it played out. Um, I really, I've said this a while back, I truly think John Dotson is the future of the flyweight division. I think he could be a champion that sells. I think he could be a champion that people can get behind, unlike Mighty Mouse. I got nothing personal against Mighty Mouse, but he just doesn't have that it that you need as a champion. Um, so I really, do think that John Dotson is going to destroy Zach Makovsky, and Makovsky is a decent fighter as well, but Dotson is is that number two guy. He He's definitely right up there with Dem, uh, Demetrius Johnson. Uh, I really feel like uh, John Dotson has, has, I wouldn't give him, I wouldn't say he's the favorite uh, for me picking wise if he fought Demetrius Johnson again, but I do think that he has a really good shot at winning. I think he's the only guy in the flyweight division uh, at least right now, uh, that, that can legitimately uh, make uh, DJ sweat and have have a good fight. So I'm going Dotson by KO, round number one within the first minute and a half. Then we move on to flyweights, Joseph Benavides and John Moraga opening up the main pay-per-view card. Uh, Joseph Benavides is a really good fighter that is just not good enough to beat Demetrius Johnson, but can pretty much beat everybody else. John Moraga had his shot at the belt. Um, <clears throat> he's a good fighter. I don't think he's as good as Joseph Benavides, but I'm still waiting for Joseph Benavides to slow down to to kind of uh, you know not be uh, as good as he is. Uh, you know, John Moraga. I think he's good, but. Definitely Joseph Benavides is better. That's for sure. I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely leaning towards Benavides on this one. Unless Miraga could catch him, uh, you know, coming in. Uh, I'm going to go with Joseph Benavides on this one. Then we have heavyweights. Travis Brown defeat, uh, facing uh, Andre Arlovsky. Uh, this, is a, this is a pretty exciting fight. I, I'm, I'm really interested in this one. By all means, Travis Brown should win this fight. I mean, Ar Arlovsky is is getting up there in age, he has a lot of miles. Uh, Travis Brown was really kind of exposed in the Verdum fight. Um, I mean, Verdum just just handily beat him, and I was so surprised, because I, I picked Travis Brown going into that fight. I thought he was like, really gonna do some, make some big waves in the heavyweight division, and, and he has he's had a little speed bump, but I think he's gonna uh, continue on the path that I originally thought he was heading, that is towards the title shot. Um, he had that weird loss to uh, Bigfoot Silva where he tore his hamstring and then gets knocked out. I mean, can't really hold that against him. That really wasn't anything he could have prevented. And uh, Andre Avlovsky uh, looked very bad against Brendan Schaub, uh, but I do truly believe that he was very nervous. He, he did say that the, you know, sort of octagon jitters got to him a bit, and, and I, I believe him. 
Um, and then he uh, knocked out Bigfoot Silva. And granted, it might be a a diminished Bigfoot Silva, but it was still a really impressive knockout. And I would love nothing more than for Andre Olaski to win this fight and fight for the title. I just think it would be really cool, like how Robbie Lawler fought for the title and became champion. I do not think, do not think that Andre Olaski uh, can beat Cain Velasquez or Verdum, but it would be damn cool to see him try. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I got to go with my brain on this one, and that is uh, Travis Brown uh, knocking out Andre Olaski in round number two. Uh, and then we have lightweights, uh, Donald Cerrone taking on John McDessey. Um, there's no reason why <clears throat> Donald Cerrone shouldn't win this fight. He's a much, much, much better, well-rounded fighter than John McDessey. Um, John McDessey has looked good and bad in his UFC run, uh, but Donald Cerrone is one of my personal favorite fighters. I love watching him. I think he's the coolest dude ever. Uh, I would love to make a top you know 10 15 favorite fighters in the UFC uh, video um, Donald Cerrone would definitely be on the you know up near the top of that list because you just want to like him you want to root for him you want to see good things happen to him I love his mentality fight anybody anywhere anytime uh, you know always looking to fight he fought so many times last year it was really impressive um, I actually did have the Benson Henderson fight scored for Cowboy, even though a lot of people didn't see it like that. Um, and I could have been slightly biased uh, because I do like Cowboy. And uh, I really, um, <laughs> you know, Benson Henderson is one of those guys that has frustrated me over the years so much because of uh, his close decision fights. And, uh, you know, I, I was kind of glad to see it happen to him for once. Um, so yeah, Donald Cerrone should win this fight. I'm not sh I think he's going to play it a little more safe than normal, which could be a bad thing. And it's, I, you know, for some reason, I can just see the upset here. I can see it because everybody is expecting Donald Cerrone to win. Uh, and it would just, it would be, you know, just one step short of the title shot. Um, I don't know, man, but I'm just going to go with Donald Cerrone because that's the smart pick. He's the better fighter. There's Without a doubt, they fought 9 out of 10 times. He would definitely win the high majority of those times. Um, moving on to the co-main event, we have Chris Weidman taking on Vitor Belfort. Um, man, it, it's been a pleasure to watch Chris Weidman's UFC career from um, his, you know, his start all the way up into knocking out Mune, uh, Mark Munez, uh, Munoz and kind of campaigning for that Anderson Silva title shot. Uh, you know, a lot of people forget, like, he wasn't he wasn't going to get that title shot for a while, and then uh, everybody else kind of lost. Um, Michael Bisbing, who was in contention, and they gave it to Chris Weidman, and he ended up... A lot of people were picking Weidman, including me, I, I believe, but you can check back on my channel. I believe I picked Weidman in my predictions video. I think I did one for that event. Um, and then I picked Weidman again in the rematch, and I picked him again in, in the Machida fight. Uh, I really don't, you know, I ha find it hard to believe that this same Vitor, the Vitor that's off TRT, is going to be the same Vitor that was uh, knocking out Luke Rockhold and Michael Bisbing and Dan Henderson in devastating fashion. I, I just feel like this cannot be the same Vitor. If it was, I would find this fight a lot more intriguing and... Uh, a lot more up in the air, but I do think this is going to be a diminished Vitor that we see, and I honestly believe that Weidman is going to, uh, you know, tear him to shreds, really. Just, I feel like, I, I have a feeling that Weidman's going to go in there and just be a buzzsaw through Vitor Belfort. So, we'll see. I'm going with Weidman. I'm going with Weidman by knockout in uh, round number two. Uh, then we have the main event. We have Anthony Johnson taking on Daniel DC Cormier. Oh man, uh, Daniel Cormier is somebody who I really do like. Uh, his fights are not the most exciting fights in the world, um, but I find him incredibly likable and I would love to see good things happen to him. Unfortunately, that is not what's going to happen because Anthony Johnson is a machine and Anthony Johnson is going to knock out Daniel Cormier and possibly uh, send him towards the way of retirement. Uh, Daniel Cormier is, you know, 
34, 35, somewhere around there. Anthony Johnson's still young. Uh, Anthony Johnson uh, has looked great as of late. Uh, his wrestling defense has looked great. Um, he destroyed Gustafson. Um, Phil Davis had nothing for him. Uh, Daniel Cormier, I, I, I don't see him being able to use his wrestling ability. I don't see him being able to hold Anthony Johnson up against the cage like he did uh, Roy Nelson and some of his other fights. I don't know how Daniel Cormier wins this fight. I, unless he, he is very successful right off the bat with his takedowns, and gets a submission on Anthony Johnson, it's going to be a long night because Johnson's going to be headhunting and he's going to knock out Daniel Cormier. Uh, I really feel this way. I would I would love to see DC win the fight. I would love to see Anthony Johnson win the fight. I would probably like to see DC win the fight more because I like him uh, that much more. But Anthony Johnson is a scary dude and I really feel like uh, it's even best for the division. I feel like if Daniel Cormier wins, Nobody will really think of him as the real champion since he did lose to the real champion. Uh, but if Anthony Johnson wins, I think they will accept the fact that he is champion because we don't know if he would have lost to John Jones. Um, however, if DC wins, it will set up a great big rematch between him and Jones, which was one of the best built up fights this year. So could really go anyway. Um, that's my picks. I'm feeling confident about a lot of them this time. The only one that I'm not super confident about is that uh, Dung Hyung Kim versus Josh Berkman fight. Everyone else, I, th I think I got this picked right. See you guys next time with another review or another uh, preview slash predictions video. Actually, I'll see you next time with my uh, review of the event um, recap slash review. So, see you guys later. Peace.